and welcome back for another edition of Rogers Roadwood Report. We're just going to go ahead and get started jumping out of the gate, showing you some of the latest items that have just recently arrived at our store. Here comes our overworked switcher pulling some pretty nice new rolling stock through town. Starting with this Intermountain HOR70-20 refrigeration car in Southern Pacific Fruit Express paint scheme, which is also restenciled. You can see plenty of these rolling through the valley with all the fruits and vegetables grown in Central and Northern California. And even though these refrigeration cars are built in the late 1960s, you still see plenty of them today on the rails. This box car is already assembled and features metal etched details, wire details, sharp painting, 33 inch diameter metal wheel sets, and KD couplers. And following behind is this Intermountain 1958 cubic foot covered hopper with closed sides in SP billboard lettering. Based on the hoppers that were built in 1949, this two bay covered hopper has lots of details. From its wire grab irons, ladders, side ribbing and metal etched roof walks to its metal wheel sets and sporting those Katy couplers. This third rolling stock car is also from Intermountain, identical in body style as the first refrigeration car. This too was built in the late 1960s. In Santa Fe markings, this has the same metal etched details, wire details, 33 inch diameter metal wheel sets and the Katy number 78 couplers. Looking down at the tracks, you're going to be able to see this Walters Proto in HO recently being released. This 53 foot AAR flat car in cotton belt markings. This is a limited edition with a one time run on these new road numbers. The flat car has weathered and detailed deck, correct weight for optimum operation, as there is nothing worse than a flat car that can't stay on the track, and full brake rigging and underbody details. And of course, Walters didn't forget to get you hooked up with those correct 33 inch turned metal wheel sets and Proto Max metal knuckle spring couplers. Now, if you're on a budget, and who's not in these economic times, then Walters train line products are for you. Take these two tankers, for instance. Now, I'm not sure how they actually got the chocolate out of these cars, and I'm assuming they heated the car, but what a job it must have been. Sort of a finger looking good job, if you ask me. And this Clark Oil Tank Car is one an example of the fine craftsmanship without the ding in the pocketbook. And Trainline Freight Cars always features the RP25 metal wheel sets for superior performance on all kinds of Code 70 and larger HO scale track. Their added weight and wheel tread match to the National Model Railroad Association standards, so you'll know that they'll run perfect on your layout. Atherin has made a name for themselves when it comes to reasonably priced ore cars that include the load. These next three cars are 24 foot ore cars in three different road names. Hey, this Union Pacific silver car really stands out. Imagine this rolling on your line with some moderate weathering. Really nice. Or this great northern coal car that's based on the ones built in 1952. And finally this soul line car and load are just like the ones built in 1929, or so I've been told. All three ore cars are already assembled with a removable injection mold of raw ore. Each car's frame is die cast for optimum performance and equipped with machine metal RP25 profile wheel sets and of course the McHenry knuckle spring couplers. And finally we have this HO scale KD 50 foot PS-1 with a 10 foot 6 inch panel superior door box car in Delaware and Hudson markings. And it has this great big message, I love New York on its side. These box cars are based on the style built in the mid 1960s with the production stopping in 1982. Next is the 50 foot PS-1 box car with a 15 foot door with the great big WP on its side which tells you that it must be with Western Pacific. This box car was built around 1957, and in this particular car, it's equipped with an Equipco type brake wheel. You can never go wrong with KD, as KD takes great pride in their high detailed grab irons, brake wheels, ladders, stirrups, handrails, and see through walkways and brake steps. Okay, friends, you're really gonna like this next item we have to show you. Perhaps you've seen this advertised in magazines, and we've actually shown this American crane before on video. But this is a one-of-a-kind setup that we have on our layout to show you just how cool this can be using DCC technology. Available in our store, 
This Walther's motorized crane comes fully assembled with factory rig cables that you can actually adjust. This crane is a one motorized axle on each truck and is set for a very slow performance as you can see. This crane has an all-wheel electrical pickup, the boom turns 90 degrees to the left or to the right, and has electromagnetic die-cast chassis with Protomax metal knuckle couplers. Of course, using this ultra-smooth rolling metal axles and the 33-inch metal wheels, it performs very well in slow speeds. You like dinosaurs? We've got one! This huge DDA-40X is a dream to see operate on our layout. The DCC Tsunami Sounds are versatile as it operates in both DCC and DC mode. Each driveline has two dynamically balanced 5-pole skew wound motors and dual flywheels on each truck. This engine is a 16-wheel drive and electrical pickup. The engine has etched windshield wipers and see-through walkways above the enormous fuel tank and has etched radiator and dynamic brake fan grills. But before you go out and buy one of these, make sure you check out your layout because it has to have a minimum of 28 inch radius. And the sounds are absolutely authentic as it's recorded from a real Union Pacific DDA 40X engine. Just listen to the sound. The first of these 25 units were ordered and delivered between April and December of 1969. The second order was for 22 units delivered between June 1970 through September of 1971. Now get this, this just might blow your mind. The cost of each of these engines back then was $551,000. Heck, my wife and I, we should have bought one of these things and lived in instead of buying the house that we live in now. Through the years since then, two of these engines were actually destroyed in wrecks. One of them in a collision at the Cajon Pass in 1974, and the other in 1978 at Point of Rocks, Wyoming. Many of these engines were scrapped, but we did manage to save 12 of them, and they've been preserved, overhauled, and one of them, number 6936, is actually remaining in service with Union Pacific. In closing, MTH has just released an Alco PA AB set, and in this case it's a Santa Fe War Bonnet paint scheme. There are other road names available as well. These babies are in DCC mode and has Proto Sound 3 on board. The real Alco units could actually pull a passenger train upwards to 100 miles an hour. They have authentic paint schemes and cab numbers, detailed truck sides, pilots, fuel tank, die cast metal chassis, two cab figures in the A unit, directional controlled headlights, operating Mars light, lighted cab interior, number board, and marker lights. And what MTH is known for, these units also have operating smoke stacks, locomotive speeds in scaled miles per hour increments, and two remote controlled couplers. Well that's all I have for you on this month's report, but I'll be back next month with more exciting new items being released by your favorite makers. So until then, I'm Rick wishing you happy model railroading.